betrogen. Imagine a sixth grade boy sitting in the back of the class in chorus because he's so shy and so timid. To utter a word out loud in front of anyone would just be terrifying for him for several reasons. He doesn't want to be noticed, first of all. Second of all, he's afraid that he might be made fun of because he's not academically gifted. He's not exactly one of the smartest students in the class. And he's not as well dressed as some of the other students in class. And he's not athletically gifted like some of his friends in class. So this kid quite doesn't get who he is. And he doesn't know where he fits. So he chooses to be quiet and be shy. So that day in class, as the kids sat there very quietly, listening to the music, participating as quietly as he could, several things happened. The teacher noticed that he wasn't singing out loud, and he was very, very upset knowing the boy had potential. So about 20 minutes before the end of the class, the teacher said, I would like to see you after class, please, and of course, all the rest of the class, being sixth graders, go, ooh, and ah, but he's in trouble. You know, that kind of sound. So the next 20 minutes for this shy young boy, who was actually quite lanky and tall for his age, which makes him another reason, which is another reason why he might be shy. He just sits there frozen in anticipation of what's going to happen in 20 minutes. Am I in trouble? So at the end of the 20 minutes, the bell rings. And the kid politely, trepidatiously walks down to the teacher and says, yes, sir. And his sixth grade course teacher says to him, I know there's a voice there inside of you, a singing voice. And if I have heard the stories about you singing in church. If you do not sing out in my class, I will be transferring you to the recorder class. The boy thought, Dear God, not the dreaded recorder class. You know, the recorders, those shiny, long, little plastic instruments that they make all kids learn to play. They're horrible. They sound squeaky. And the last thing the boy wanted to was be transferred from chorus into this recorder class. So the boy packs up, takes his backpack, goes home, and doesn't utter a word of it to his parents because, of course, he doesn't want to get in trouble for being called home after school. And it's two days until the next cl chorus class. So he sits there for two days, frozen with anticipation and fright, thinking, how am I gonna sing out? What if somebody hears my singing voice and they make fun of me or they call me names? He worried about that for two nights. He barely slept for two nights. Then comes the dreaded day. He gets up that morning, he picks out a favorite pair of khakis that his mom normally saves for him to wear to church. He picks out his favorite red sweater with matching socks and puts those on because if he's going to face his fears, he's going to do it looking great. So he goes to school, all dressed up, and comes to chorus class. What does he do? How does he sing out? The music starts. And there he goes. He sings to the loudest of his voice. He sings out loud. He sings as loudly as he possibly can. At the end of the song, everyone turns from the ascending rows and starts clapping and calling his name and saying, I had no idea you could sing like that. That was awesome. Rounds of applause just thundered the classroom. And a glimmer of smile came over the chorus teacher's face. You see, I know this story very well because this story's me. And it continued with rollicking sounds of, oh, Tim, how wonderful. Well, all of a sudden, I was the popular kid in chorus. Kids asked me to sit with them at lunch. Kids asked me to go home with them to listen to records and listen to music and talk about chorus. I got to sit with them on the bus in chorus trips. So I suddenly, face to fear, did what I dreaded to do Facing consequences of, will I be made fun of, or will I reach my potential? Well, that's the moral of this story. A lot of times when we face our fears, 
not knowing whether or not we're going to be successful, if someone's going to laugh at us or if someone's going to snicker. But what really matters is the fact that you faced your fear and you did something that brought out your full potential. So we can't let fear define who we are. And because I faced my fears, I haven't stopped singing since. They haven't been able to shut me up. But the teacher brought out something in me that I didn't think was possible, and that's potential. He brought out the potential in me to be who I was, to make an impression on other people, to show them that I was a singer, I was a performer. Make fun of me or not, that's your choice. But my choice is I'm gonna be who I want to be and who I am. And this lesson is something that I carry with me throughout school and throughout life. Take chances. Be who you're really supposed to be. Take chances. Don't worry about what other people think. I did just that, and that's what has led me to, be, to coming back to school to study music education. Because if I can use my experience to change one child's life, then all of school and all the money that I paid to go to school will be worth it. So my challenge to you is to face the fear, step out on the ledge, do your best, and don't worry, what, uh, don't worry about what other people think. Be yourself. Thank you.